question of absolute values of coefficient of other variables. This is the meaning of this mathematical expression and this is the specific condition. So suppose you have OK, um, you already get uh, you already get this one. OK, this condition is satisfied for equation one. So suppose you would like to check um, same condition for the coefficient other values in the same equation. OK, let me do it for you. Suppose minus two. Then 13 then 6. So what did you get? Be less than this value. Uh, isn't it? So if you consider this value in of z, what do you get? 13 plus absolute of minus 2. That should be less than this value. So you are right. So this equation should be exist in first position and the x is a considered variable. Next, move on second equation. And what is a considered variable? What is a considered variable? Y, isn't it? So you have to check same condition for second equation in is variable in is variable so let me check it so how about uh, the coefficient of y eight how about the coefficient of x and z absolute of minus three plus absolute of minus one so this is greater than this value isn't it you get this relation because eight should be greater than four always this is true so yes, you can think uh, yes, y is a considered variable and um, we don't need to do any operation for second equation so that the condition should be satisfied because we already have the condition that is satisfied, isn't it? So suppose you would like to check these and these coefficients. What is the relation between them? If we consider X is a solving variable for equation two, what do you get? Absolute value of minus three, absolute value of eight, plus absolute value of minus one. So you get this relation, isn't it? Similarly, you can get another relation here. Let me write it down here for you absolute value of minus z because this is the coefficient of z and that should be less than uh, the summation of absolute value of minus 3 and absolute value of 8. Isn't it? So that should be less than. So you are right. Y is a considered variable and you don't need to rearrange or remake this second equation. So next move on third equation. So on this right diagonal axis, you see Z exist. That means Z is a considered variable, considered solving variable. So let me check the criteria that I already um, have applied for earlier equations or previous equations. So let me check. So if you think, um, is it possible that x is a considered variable, considered solving variable for equation three? Let me check. So 10, that means absolute value of 10, then absolute value of eight plus absolute value of 40. So that should be less than this value, isn't it? So we 
we can't choose x is a solving variable for third number equation. Then, if you think, uh, do I consider y is a solving variable here? No, because you get again this relation. Isn't it? And if you think, OK, how about Z? Because we consider Z is a solving variable for equation number three. What is about the condition? Does it satisfy or not? Let me check. So 40 and we get here absolute value of 10 plus absolute value of 8. So you get the condition and this is the a specific condition that should be satisfied for each equation to be any system diagonally dominant. So we get now this system is diagonally dominant. So if you get a diagonally dominant system you have to you have to write solving variables equation so from equation 1 what do we get so equation 1 let me check 13x minus 2y then plus 6z, this is equal to 0. So from equation 1, we can get x value because we consider x is a solving variable, isn't it? This is equal to 0 plus 2 times y minus 6 times z divided by 13. So you can write like this x equal to 1 by 13 2 times y minus 6 times z you can get this one right you can get this equation similarly from equation 2 you can get y you can get y so y equal to y equal to 1 by 8 times 1 my 1 plus 3x 1 plus 3x plus z isn't it and from equation 3 you can get z this is equal to 1 by 40 that times is it minus 12 but 12 minus 12 minus 12 minus 10x plus 8 Isn't it? So from equation 1, 2, 3, you can get this format. So our target was we have to do iteration. So how do we do iteration? That means we have to apply here suffix of E solving variable. So if you apply here suffix n plus 1 in left hand side for each solving variable, so you can easily get iterative formula. And for this case, you have to mention right hand side variable suffix as n. Isn't it? So this is the iterative formula based on 
Zacobi iterative method. Okay, these are known as Zacobi iterative formula. So you get these three formula. So if you would like to get Gauss Seidel iterative formula, what you should to do? At first you have to check does the provided system is diagonally dominant or not. So you see here this system is diagonally dominant. So we can easily make iterative formula from this diagonally dominant system. How do we make it? As simple as, let me show you uh, what it is. As simple as you can write, you can write iterative formula from equation on like this. 1 divided by 13, that times 2 times y minus 6 times z and here you have to apply suffix n for first solving variable okay next y suffix n plus 1 you can see some difference here let me show you what it is y suffix n plus 1, this is equal to 1 divided by 8 times, 1 divided by 8 times, 1 plus 3 times, x. Now you have to use updated value of x here. Then, plus z n, plus z n. All right, next, z suffix n plus 1, this is equal to 1 by 40 times, minus 12, minus 10, times x, that, then plus 8 times y, plus 8 times y, isn't it? So how about the suffix of x and y? So you have to apply here updated value of x. So what is the updated value of x? This one, isn't it? And how about updated value of y? You have y n. What will be the next value? If you have, suppose if you have y n, y n plus one. So which one will be the updated value? y n or y n plus 1? y n plus 1. No. Exactly. So you should apply here updated value of y. That comes from exactly here. Clear? So do you understand what is the basic difference between Jacobi iterative method and uh, gauss Seidel iterative method? Is it clear to you? Yes, ma'am. All right. Now I will show you if you get somewhere any system, this is not diagonally dominant. So how do you make the system is diagonally dominant? I will show you. Just give me a couple of seconds. can do it like this.
I think there's some. So suppose you have the system. You have a system of linear equations and uh, you would like to solve this system by using iterative method. It could be uh, either Jacobi iterative method, it could be or Gauss-Seidel iterative method. It's up to you unless I define somewhere in the question the method methodology. Okay. And look at here. This is the this is the specific condition that I discussed with you. Okay. If every equation satisfies the condition, so what is about the condition? From here to here. The magnitude of the coefficient of solving variable is greater than the sum of the absolute values of the coefficients of the other variables. So suppose you have the given system of linear equation. This one. So think about it. What is a right diagonal axis for the system of linear equation? This one, isn't it? So based on this pattern of the system of linear equation, you can consider right now x is a solving variable. So what is about? x is a solving variable. So for first equation, okay, next, what we should to do? We have to check these condition. Let me check for you. So I just do it for you. What is about, what is the coefficient of x? One, take the magnitude of it. If you do absolute, operation of this value or uh, then you will get magnitude of the magnitude of this coefficient of variable x then how about the coefficient of other variable plus 2 plus 10 2 and 10 if you add them together what is the relation so does the condition satisfy? Does the condition satisfy? No, ma'am. No. So just think about it. How about this one? Absolute value two, then absolute value one plus absolute value 10. Here you get same relation, but this is not true for this specific case. Then, if you take this on absolute value of 10, then absolute value of 1 plus absolute value of 2, that should be less than this one. So, these equation on can't be used anywhere. That means in first position, second position, or third position. So, we need to rearrange these equation one. So I will show you how. Next, move on second equation. So based on this right diagonal axis, y is considered a solving variable. So let me let me check. Does the condition satisfy or not for this equation because you have to take every equation remember it so suppose i take at first um, the coefficient of y 
this is minus 10 take absolute of it then how about other variables coefficient take them and uh, do absolute of them separately and add them finally so what do we get 1 plus minus 2 sorry i think minus 1 absolute of minus 1 isn't it absolute of minus 1 so what do you get you get 10 get it then 2 isn't it so you get okay the condition is satisfied for this variable so let me check uh, how about other variables coefficient condition here so consider x just take the coefficient of x for same equation absolute value of x then absolute value of y and take the absolute value of z what do you get one should be less than this value isn't it so, so similarly you have to you have to check the relation again so what is the coefficient of z for second equation minus one so just take the absolute of it then how about the coefficient of other variables one and absolute of minus 10 so what is the relation less than so only you get this condition is satisfied for second equation and you see this is the this is the coefficient of y and y exactly exists on right diagonal axis so you don't need to uh, do any operation for second positional equation this equation should be same so just you have to take third equation because this equation is remaining to check the condition so where uh, look at this right diagonal axis on this right diagonal axis z variable exists so let me check this z variable at beginning so absolute value of the coefficient of z variable and how about the absolute value of other variables coefficient in same equation absolute value of 11 plus absolute value of 5 so what is the relation that should be less than isn't it so let me check other other variables coefficients uh, does the condition satisfy or not so 11 then you get 5 plus 8 that should be less than isn't it you get this relation and how about y variable so 5 then 11 plus 8 that should be less than isn't it so you get here you get here only for second equation this condition is satisfied so you need to you need to make first positional equation and third positional equation by doing some operation it could be subtraction operation it could be addition operation so suppose you see uh, okay let me write it down here second equation okay x minus 10 y minus z so x minus sorry how do we remove don't worry x minus 10 y minus z this is equal to 24 this is equation 2 okay and now we need to make equation 1 and equation 3 so that the coefficient of x should be greater than the sum of other variables coefficient and you should take magnitude of these coefficients similarly you should make the coefficient of z in third equation okay this is equation on this is equation three so that the condition should be satisfied so how do we make it now 
come to this point if you if you do the subtraction operation between equation 1 and equation 2 what do you get just do simple subtraction operation what do you get if you do this subtraction operation you will get an equation so suppose uh, second equation exactly keep in the same position of equation so you should rearrange the first positional equation and third positional equation so how do we do this operation so if you if you swap the first number equation into third number equation so what do you get what do you get why you didn't respond i write here um, 10 is these... greater than 1 plus 2 exactly why you didn't respond because i wrote here less than but everyone was silent why because look at the relation 10 greater than this value that means what you have to find where exactly this coefficient exists in the same equation so these works we have done for equation one isn't it and this 10 is the coefficient of z so this equation should be move on third position so let me write it down here x plus 2y plus 10z x plus 2y plus 10z this is equal to 10 isn't it and check for each variable in equation 3 you get the condition is satisfied isn't it because look at this diagonal axis z is a solving variable so for this solving variable the condition is satisfied check it now we need to make first equation so how do we make it how do we make it so second equation should not should not be changed at all so you have first equation and third equation so you have to perform some operation between first equation and third equation so you already move equation number one into third positional equation so you need to make now first equation so how do you make it suppose you would like to do this operation equation one subtract that is subtract okay that means equation one minus equation three what is the meaning let me write it down here if you subtract equation three from equation one what do you get let me do it for you so equation one minus equation three so you get here minus 10 x 2 minus 5 so you get minus 3 y then 10 minus 8 you get plus 2 times z this is equal to minus 21 isn't it so look at the relation so from this equation you have to you have to check does the condition satisfy or not so x is a considered variable so minus absolute value of minus 10 absolute value of 3 absolute value of 2 so yes that should be greater than how about this y variable take the coefficient of y take other coefficient of other variables so x and 2 so less than isn't it similarly you get this condition that is satisfied here 
so minus 10 plus absolute of minus 3 isn't it so you can do the subtraction operation equation 1 minus equation 3 isn't it so if you do equation 3 minus equation 1 so for this case you get this equation so if you take minus 1 common so you will get same equation isn't it is it clear yes ma'am just take yes, ma minus 1 common from this equation what do you get you get this equation so we get finally we get finally 10x plus 3y so 10x plus 3y then minus 2z this is equal to 21 let me check yes so it doesn't matter if you do subtraction operation between equation 1 and equation 3 in this order or equation 3 minus equation 1 it doesn't matter okay because finally you will get same form of the equation come to this point so we get now we get now the system this is diagonally dominant So is it clear to you? Is it clear now? So yeah, when yes, you get, question, yeah, please. Ma'am, actually, ma'am, the equation that is correct, that is, 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 because uh, you don't need to change uh, anywhere in this equation because the condition is satisfied for each variable in the same equation so why you change why you would like to change this one ma'am ami ota boli na bolechi je ma'am apni je first one theke ma'am third one je subtraction korechen Mm -hmm. So, I mean, our Judy Gokhan of Prussian Hoji, I mean, first one take a second one subtraction corbo. What I can quote the verb? Uh, no, because uh, you have to you have to discard the equation who is satisfied the condition. That means just leave it, leave it this equation to do further operation. How many equation remaining? This one and this one. So you have to perform some operations whenever you need between remaining equations. Is it clear? Yes, ma'am. Okay. So when you get the system is diagonally dominant, you can easily make iterative formula from here. That has been done. That has been. Uh, done here and you see the iterative formula all right this one these are iterative formula based on jacobi so um, you will get iterative formula for gauss seidel iteration so next what is the benefit what is the what is the benefit if, if we uh, would like to apply gauss seidel iterative method compared to um, Jacobi iterative method? So, gauss seidel iterative method gives you more more efficient outcomes. That means, if you apply gauss seidel iterative method, you will get very less error of your outcome so when you get less error of your outcome you should you should take this on right because you get less error so why you choose another uh, method they have uh, compared to 
uh, more error rather than Gauss iterative formula. So you choose the method which gives you less error of your outcome. So these are the benefit. These are the outcome. These are the um, like um, positive side of Gauss iterative method. So unless I define or unless examiner define the method, you can apply either Jacobi iterative method or Gauss iterative method. It's up to you. Suppose you have uh, this system of linear equations. So look at this sub question. What you should to do? The requirement is you have to make a diagonally dominant form of this system. So look at these equations. Try to find right diagonal element and check the condition that is given here or mentioned here. So for this specific example, you get the condition is not satisfied. So you make you need to make this system of linear equation is in diagonally dominant form. OK. So uh, yes, you can uh, perform um, some operations between equation one, two, three, uh, and you can check does the equation satisfy or not. So it's easy if you uh, select any equation that is uh, satisfied the given condition for the respective position. So it will be easy to perform um, remaining operation between the chosen remaining equations that you already have seen in previous examples. So suppose for OK, take this equation. So if you consider X is a solving variable, so how about the condition? So that should be less than, isn't it? So how about other? That should be less than. So how about other? That should be less than. So this equation should not satisfy the condition. Move on second equation. Move on second equation. You get same same situation here. So this y variable exists on right diagonal axis. So just pick this element. Take the um, modulus of it or take the absolute value of this coefficient. So how about other coefficients? This is less than. Take this on 3 plus 2. So you get this is greater than, isn't it? And how about next on? So you get this is less than. So where these, where these value as a coefficient of variable x, isn't it? But uh, where exactly this equation exists in second position? So let's move on. Let's move on. Third equation. You have to check the condition for is considered variable. And remember, this z is considered as a solving variable because this z variable exists on right diagonal axis. So now, if if you want, uh, you can uh, you can do 
some operations here between equation one and equation two, equation one and equation three. Then you have to check does the condition satisfy or not? If this is not, then you have to do other operation so that you can get any equation that should be satisfy the given condition. So if you check equation number two in first position, what do we get? What do we get? Look at here. We get absolute value of eight greater than three plus two. That means we get this condition is satisfied. Okay, let me write it down. Um, relations uh, for equation three, then you will be more clear. So let me check absolute value of minus eight, then absolute value of 10 plus absolute value of minus seven. That should be less than, isn't it? Take this one, absolute value of minus seven, absolute value of 10, absolute value of eight. That should be less than. Similarly, you get absolute value of 10. So absolute value of minus eight plus absolute value of minus seven, then that should be less than. So among these relation, you only get this condition is satisfied, isn't it? This is the same condition that you can get. So what exactly these condition exist? What exactly these coefficient exist? So this is for equation number two, isn't it? So where these coefficient exist, this eight is the coefficient of X. And we see X is a fast solving variable and X exactly exists in fast column. So you can write this is equation one. That means equation two can move on equation one position. Clear? Then um, you have to do some other operation between equation. Okay, let me write it down. Equation two in equation one position. So 8x minus 3y plus 2z, this is equal to 16. Okay, so how about other equation? 6x plus 5y plus 3z, this is equal to 7. 10x minus 7y minus 8z, this is equal to 15. So this equation is fixed because we already checked the condition is satisfied. Okay, now come to this point. How about this second and third equation? How about this second and third equation? So this is your solving variable. So five, isn't it? So you already get, okay, let me check it. Absolute values of five, absolute values of six, plus absolute values of three. So that should be less than, isn't it? You get, this is not true. The condition is not satisfied for this equation. Similarly, you get the condition is not satisfied for third equation because absolute value of a minus eight, that should be less than absolute value of 10 plus absolute value of minus seven. So you should remake or rearrange these equation two and three so that you can get the equation like this. The condition is satisfied for considered solving variable. So if you do subtraction operation like from here to here, what do you get? Six minus 10, you get minus four. Then five minus of minus seven, 12 y, then 11 z, this is equal to 22. So he, if you would like to write this equation in second position, so y e will be a considered variable, solving variable. So how about this one? Absolute value of y, so absolute value of four, absolute value of 11. 
So look at here, 12 should be less than this one. So you don't do this operation. You don't do this subtraction operation. What we did here, equation two minus equation three. We have done this operation and we see this relation. And we see the condition breaks here. So we don't we don't use this operation to make second equation. So what we should to do? If you do this operation, equation one minus equation two. So who's on equation one? So you can uh, you can define this is equation four, this is five, this is six. If you want, you can do it. So this should be five this should be 6 according to this order of the equation. Now, if you do the operation equation 1 minus equation 2, so you get this equation, isn't it? So according to this, according to this order, this is the right diagonal axis and y is considered solving variable. So let me check it. Does the condition satisfy or not? The condition is satisfied, isn't it? The condition is satisfied. And for other cases, you get, yeah, the condition is satisfied, okay? So next, if you do this subtraction operation, equation two minus equation three, that means if you do this operation, equation two minus equation three, so you get this equation. So for this equation, you get the condition is satisfied. Why? Because the absolute value of 10 that should be greater than absolute value of minus two and absolute value of four, isn't it? So you will get now diagonally dominant system. So you, yes, you can, you can do operations somewhere any equations, any two equations, uh, but uh, will be reduced the process of calculation or is takes. Just, okay, come back here. So this is second positional equation. So um, if you want, you can do subtraction operation between one, two, like one minus two, you, if you want, you can do one minus three. If you want, you can do two minus three. But for each case, you have to check the condition is satisfied or not. So it's, it, it, it just reduces the calculation steps. If you keep this on, okay, then you can, you can choose first equation and second, uh, third equation to do further equation, further uh, to get further equations, isn't it? It will be easy. But yes, you, you will be more confident if you practice a lot. More confident if you see any equation, system of equations, just uh, um, have a look this equation then you can decide okay i need to do this operation then i will get a diagonal the dominant system so if you practice a lot you will be more confident you will know what you should to do how do you get diagonally dominant system quickly You have this diagonal dominant system right now. Then you have to make iterative formula that comes from Gauss-Seidel iteration. So you already know the process, so you can easily make the Gauss-Seidel iterative formula. What it is? So from equation one, let me write it down here. So from equation one, you get first iteration x equal to, so let me write it down here, 
8 times x minus 3 times y then plus 2 times z this is equal to 16. So from here you can get x iteration. Isn't it? Since this is the iteration formula for Gauss Seidel, so you have to mention here updated y and z variable. So we have we have xn, we have yn, we have zn, and we would like to get x suffix n plus on, y suffix n plus on, z suffix n plus on. We would like to get these on. Already we have x suffix n plus on. So now, how about updated values? How about updated values? We have xn, we have x suffix n plus on, we have y suffix n, we have z suffix n. So we have now updated value of x. So if you would like to get y suffix n plus on from second equation, what do we get? 1 divided by 8 times minus 9 then plus 2 times x then minus z isn't it so we have updated value of x like x suffix n plus 1 so we have to use x suffix n plus 1 here so what is the updated value of z this is n isn't it next how about z suffix n plus one this is equal to one divided by ten oops oh my god oh, everything has erased i click erase button somehow so x suffix n plus on this is equal to uh, so next y suffix n plus on and z suffix n plus on you already have isn't it in this form so 1 divided by 8 times 16 minus so 16 plus 3 y then minus 2 z so you have to apply here suffix n Next, how about y suffix n plus 1? So 1 divided by 8, that times minus 9, then plus 2x minus z. So how about updated value of x? This value comes here instead of x, isn't it? And z suffix n. So how about z suffix n plus 1? One, two, four. X, Y. So you have to apply here updated value of X and updated value of Y. Then only you can get X, Y, Z value after doing iterations so suppose you would like to do first time iteration so for first time iteration you have to consider n equal to 0 so if you consider n equal to 0 you will get first iteration so what will be the x value x1 this is equal to 1 by 8 times 16 plus 3 times y naught minus 2 times z naught isn't it and how about y1 because if you substitute n value here n equal to 0 you will get y suffix 1 that is equal to 1 by 8 times minus 9 plus 2 times x 1 but you have to 
you have to you have to write here updated values of x that I written minus then z time z suffix not isn't it and you will get z suffix on this is equal to 1 by 10 times 1 minus 2 times x on plus 4 times y you should apply this value here y1 so you will get x y z value after doing first iteration if you would like to do second iteration what we should do just consider n equal to 1 for second iteration so what do we get x n plus 1 so n is equal to 1 so you can get 1 plus 1 this is equal to x2 and this is equal to 1 by 8 times this one so what is about what is about 16 plus 16 plus y suffix so let me write it down here 16 plus 3 times y so 3 times y so do you have any updated value of y right now do you have what is about updated value of y so if you do first time iteration you will get updated value of y as y1 isn't it so you should apply here y1 and uh, how about z from first time iteration you will get updated value of z as z on so you should apply here z on so next Similarly, you can get y2 value. Isn't it? What is about y2 value? Minus 9 plus 2 times x minus z. So what is the updated value of x? This one. Isn't it? So you have to insert here x2 value directly. And how about updated value of z? This one. So you have to write here Z on. Then you will get Z2. What it is? 1 divided by 10 times 1 minus 2 times X. And 2 times Y. So what is the updated value of X? What is the updated value of X? X2. Isn't it? And what is the updated value of y? This one. So you should apply this value here. So you will get outcome from this calculation. So you get x naught, y naught, z naught value from the question. These are the provided initial value of variables. So just substitute here x not value. Just substitute here x not value. So in this equation, do you see x not anywhere next to equal sign? So you don't need to substitute this value. But you have y not and z not. So you can substitute here y not and z not value. So you will get x on value. Similarly, you, you, you can easily substitute x on value that comes from here. And z not value that is given to you initially. So you can get y on value. And if you substitute here x on and y on that comes from here, then you will get z on value. Now this is time to substitute these getting outcomes for next iteration. So that you will get x2, y2, z2 value. So this is the this is the solving variables outcome after doing second time iteration. Similarly, if you consider n equal to 2, you can uh, you can get third iteration. So if you do third iteration, you will get x3 value you will get y3 value you will get 
z3 value isn't it so if i ask you to find x y z value after doing third iteration so i hope you can able to do isn't it a process so here n equal to 0 is considered for first iteration n equal to 1 is considered for second iteration so after doing second time iteration you get x equal to this value y equal to this value z equal to this value look at this question here you have to uh, pick the outcome up to two decimal places so here you see next to next to decimal marker you see three digit exists so you have to pick only two digit next to decimal marker so what it will be this one what it will be you can write equivalence sign here so what it is 0 0.0.85 minus 0 0.85 and here 0 0.73 these are the given so you can uh, perform same operation by writing a code in MATLAB software. So here, the requirement is you have to perform four times iteration. You have to perform same operation four times. So it's a very time consuming if you do a step by a step with your hand and like uh, if you use pen paper isn't it but um, if you write a code and give direction uh, to do this operation then you can get within couple of seconds the outcomes so this is the first iteration this is second iteration this is third iteration this is fourth iteration and this is fifth iteration so after doing fourth iteration you will get this outcome if you do if you would like to do five time iteration then you will get this result and for this case you have to mention the number of iteration here this is the controlling n variable that defines the number of iteration okay and initially you have to mention first iteration is zero because this is stored here exactly. So you can get the outcomes after doing several times iteration. If you would like to get, you can use these code directly. But please, um, I request everyone, please play with this code after writing it in MATLAB software. Then only you can understand what you should to do based on the requirement of the examiner. And uh, these formula, these iterative formula comes from diagonally dominant system. All right. So here's sample question. Here, uh, please try to practice a lot. If you face any type of difficulty, just let me know. And uh, these are the these are the homework and uh, you should provide these homework by next Wednesday at 5 p.m. I will provide a link. Okay these homework to me by next Wednesday at 5 p.m. I at all let me check what is the time right now. OK, so we have five minutes. So here, this is the niche topics. 
you see non-linear equations. This chapter covered by you have to solve non-linear equation in one variable. That means somewhere you get non-linear equation and each non-linear equation have only one variable. So how do we solve it? So you can apply these methodologies. You can apply graphical method if you want. You can apply bisection method if you want. You can apply second method if you want. If you want, you can apply Newton Dapson method or fixed point iteration method. It's up to you. So here should be one. OK, so. Come to this point. How do we find the degree of any polynomial? Because this is important. Degree of polynomial defines how many roots be possible for the nonlinear equation. Suppose this example x cube plus 4x minus 3, this is equal to 0. So how many roots be possible for this first polynomial equation? How many roots be possible for this one equation? x cube plus 4x minus 3 equal to 0. How many roots be possible? Ma'am, 3. 3, because the maximum power of considered variable is 3. And this is the degree of this polynomial equation. So this is the total number of roots. That means you will be, we will get um, three roots. This is total roots. So it could be real, it could be complex. So how do you get a number of real roots? How do you find number of complex roots? So I will show you next class the process to predict number of real roots, number of complex roots. OK, so if you want, you can uh, go through this graphical method. And uh, yes, of course, I will discuss this method in next class with other methodology. So um, thank you so much, everyone. So I need to, uh, to roll call right now. So don't leave this class, OK? Just give me only a couple of seconds. Where is the pen?